Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? If you haven't heard about Anchor or Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. That's right. You don't need anything else, a phone or computer. No special equipment, no fancy hardware. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, basically anywhere podcasts are podcasted. (laughs) It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. That's right. Costs you nothing to use it online or download the app to your phone. Download the Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started today. And then let me know where I can hear your podcast. Hey all, it's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome to All Things Billy, the podcast that talks about all things Billy the Kid. And uh, welcome back to me, (laughs) to me, (laughs) because I've been gone so long. And uh, glad to have you here with us. Um, Today, we have a uh, interesting episode. We're going to start a little series on the women of Billy the Kid. And... uh, Today's episode will be on the uh, infamous, famous uh, Paulita Maxwell. We're going to talk about Paulita, uh, some interesting tidbits I dug up about her, uh, figure out whether she was or was not the kid's girl, and uh, we'll uh, we'll give you all the details. Um, but first, before we do that, I want to give you a quick update. First of all, thank you for those that have downloaded the audiobook um, via the podcast. So it's in four parts if you haven't seen it. Um, and you can just go to Anchor FM and then look for Michael Judasissi or All Things Billy, and that'll give you the link. But essentially, anywhere you get podcasts, you can find it and then download it. It's in four pieces, total uh, running time about five and a half hours. And uh, I got to say, for a really crappy announcer, me, um, <laughs> Jimmy James, my Jimmy James Norris, my engineer, made it sound really, really good. And uh, it sounds like a real audiobook, which I guess it is. Um, it will be for sale on Audible at some point in the near future, but you have 90 days to download and listen to it. And uh, and then and then you don't. <laughs> like after the 90 days, you don't have that time anymore. So if you'd like to listen to the first book in the Back to Billy series, absolutely free, you can just do that. And uh, I'll put the link uh, to download it in the show notes. Uh, So however you access those, you'll see them here. And if you're listening on YouTube, you'll see them in the show notes on YouTube. Um, The the, the real intent with the first Back to Billy book was it was just a one and done, right? The book was over. Uh, But I had a a, a film producer out of, um, I think it was in Denver, somewhere around Denver, and he had read the script because I have a feature film script for this. And he had uh, read the script and he said, hey, Michael, I really liked it. But, you know, what happened to Farber? What happened to Lily? What happened to Rosita? What happened to Junior? What happened to like you You left a real a lot to the imagination. And that was by design because I like people having to sometimes fill in their own things. But the more I thought about it, the more I I realized he was right. And I realized there was more story to tell. I didn't know it was going to be five books more, Uh, but, but it is. Uh, With that said, this audio book is a story unto itself, a beginning, a middle and end. And uh, so please feel free to go listen to that. Love to hear what you think about it. You can email me, billythekidridesagain at gmail.com or find us on Twitter. B, at BTK Rides on Twitter or on, you know, you just find me on any of uh, the other social media platforms. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, you can you can curse me out. I mean, some of you people are brutal anyway. Most of you are very nice, though. Um, so feel free to uh, let me know what you thought. Uh, and there we go. The other thing is the uh, my new film, The Final Trial of Billy the Kid. And I actually have two new films coming out concurrently on Amazon Prime Video, The Final Trial of Billy the Kid and 30 Seconds in Hell, a supernatural retelling of the gunfight at the OK Corral. Um, 
as probably you remember, if you've been listening, uh, Amazon doesn't give us any information. The, it will be coming up on four weeks pretty soon since they ordered and got the film. But however long it takes to work through their uh, system, you know, put the film up, add the assets, put all the meta tags, hyperlink, like all that stuff. And, and just, you know, we don't, they won't tell us. So could be up tomorrow, could be up a month from tomorrow. We just don't know. Everybody tells me two weeks to two months. So we're certainly past the three week mark. So hopefully we have a, uh, we have the home stretch in sight, but we did have the uh, world red carpet premiere in Arlington, Texas at Studio Movie Grill this past Wednesday. And it, gosh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it really was damn near sold out house. We had Carla and Kelly Kidd, who uh, respectively pay, uh, play uh, Pat Garrett and Judge Croston. Uh, they were there. We also had uh, Tyler Skurlock as our special guest. And Tyler, if that Skurlock name means anything to you, and if you're listening to listening to this podcast. I hope it does. He's the great, great, great grandson of Doc Skurlock, Lincoln County regulator, pal of Billy the Kid. And uh, Doc did settle in, uh, you know, kind of north central Texas uh, toward the end of his life. And he's got a lot of family there. So uh, thanks for everybody that came out. One of the coolest things that happened, I, I sat, I did a little talk at the beginning, and then we played the film and I sat in the front row all by myself. Um, and there were these three young guys. Now realize Kelly Kidd is a high school uh, teacher as well as the baseball coach for his high school in Arlington. And so he had a lot of his students showed up that you know wanted to see you know Coach Kidd in in uh, on the big screen. And these three guys were probably on his baseball team, and they sat down in the front row and they were talking, you know, chatting a little bit. And in the film. There are uh, several instances where tempers get pretty hot, as you could probably imagine. If if a trial with Brushy Bill and John Miller and Pat Garrett actually could take place, there would be some hot tempers. Well, that happened, and uh, and in the one scene, uh, Kelly Kid or Pat Garrett comes off the witness stand like in kind of a threatening manner, and I heard one of these young guys go, "Yeah, that's my coach." <laughs> which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, but we did have a, an excellent time uh, at the at the verdict. Some people cheered, some people booed, some people didn't say a word. So uh, what's your reaction going to be? Well, gosh, I wish you could tell me, but you can't until Amazon gets on the, on the ball and gets the film out. I'm really hopeful that it's um, uh, this week. But we'll see. Uh, there will be an announcement via the podcast, via all social media, via YouTube. I mean, as soon as it comes out, uh, obviously, I'm going to let <laughs> everybody know. I check every day to see if uh, the film comes out. In fact, I go to my little Alexa and I say, find 30 seconds in hell. Find the final trial of Billy the Kid. And she gives me these crappy results because there's nothing to find yet. But any day now, stand by and uh, I appreciate your patience with that. All right. So with that said, it's time to talk about the women of Billy the Kid and none uh, more prominent in, uh, you know, in history than Paulita Maxwell, the bell of Fort Sumner. So we'll get into Paulita's life and everything else we can figure right after this. All right. So historically, oh, we're back, by the way. <laughs> historically, uh, Billy the Kid was known as a ladies' man. And uh, there were more than a couple of people that proclaimed him to be so, one of which actually was Paulita Maxwell. Um, but let's uh, dispense with the, uh, let's get all the facts first of Paulita's life. Uh, Paulita Maxwell Jaramillo, born 1864. I've also seen that as 63 or 65. So no specific date or year in Mora, New Mexico or Mora, if you're from the uh, area and in the vernacular. Um, but with any, uh, roughly born about 100 years before I was. That, what, how ironic. <laughs> uh, Paulita Maxwell died 
17 December 1929, so age 64, 65, uh, somewhere in that region. And she lived in Fort Sumner for the rest of her life, uh, although she moved to new Fort Sumner, not old Fort Sumner, because that was non-existent, and buried in the old Fort Sumner Cemetery under the name Paulita Maxwell Jaramillo. Um, so there you go. Uh, she was the daughter of Lucian Bonaparte Maxwell. He somehow related to uh, William Morrison, either by blood or by marriage, William Morrison of Brushy Bill fame, and Anna Maria de la Luz Bobian Maxwell. Uh, Lucian dies in 1875, so Paulita is about 11 years old, and uh, Anna Maria dies in 1900, so by that point, uh, Paulita is 36 years old. She's married in 1862 to Jose Felix, Feliz Jaramillo, Felix Jaramillo. Um, oh, no, yeah. She's married to him, no, in 1862, dumbass. That's when he's born, 1862. They're married shortly after Billy the Kid is killed, 1881. Uh, she has three children, Teles, Telesfor, Telesfor. You've seen the picture, kind of, you know, has a uncanny resemblance to Billy the Kid. Telesfor, Jose Jaramillo, Adelina Rita Jaramillo, Wellborn. I know some Wellborns from Texas. I wonder if there's any... Uh, connection there, and Luz Jaramillo Flana. Uh, Telesfor, Telesfor, dies in 1859, Adelina, 1961, Luz passes in 1974. Uh, not that far that we can't remember 1974, although it's, you know, 40, what, 48 years ago or something like that. Um, and she has five siblings, Pete Maxwell, Pedro, Virginia Maxwell Keys, Maria Sofia Maxwell Jaramillo, maybe married a brother or sister of Jose, uh, Veranisa Maxwell, Odila, Od I thought it was Odilia, but o Odila Maxwell Abreu, many Abreus in New Mexico right now. Um, it looks like uh, Paulita was born in 64, which would make her the next to last child, only Odila, is younger. All right, so we're caught up. Lived, uh, born in Mora, lived most of her life in Fort Sumner, passed away there, and uh, known as the Belle of Fort Sumner. Now, hey, I, I mean, who am I to pass judgment? I would just say, when you hear the Belle of Fort Sumner, I, I, I think of, I don't know, I, I, I am minc mincing words here. Look, she's, I'm sure she was a lovely woman, but she doesn't look like the Belle of Fort Sumner to me. Now, these pictures are later in life, and maybe, I don't know, maybe things changed. Um, but she, Fort Sumner only had 200 people. I mean, I could be the best looking guy in a town of eight people. So I, I assume she was the Belle of Fort Sumner. I don't know if she would have been the Belle of Albuquerque or Santa Fe or New York City, but in Fort Sumner, she was tops. And as such, uh, I guess a lot of men were, you know, interested in her. Uh, her brother, Pete, uh, born a full uh, 16 years before her, uh, very protective of Paulita, we hear. And uh, so, you know, I, I, yeah, I guess you would have to be protective of the Bella Fort Sumner. Okay, so what about Paulita Maxwell, right? In other words, was she Billy the Kid's girl, right? That's the big question because Paulita Maxwell herself says, no, I was not. And that's kind of interesting uh, when you start to pull it apart because there's some things in there uh, that are interesting. In 1925 or 26, she's interviewed by Walter Noble Burns, novelist, who's writing a novel called Billy the Kid. His book, by the way, reinvigorates the world about Billy the Kid. Up until then, Billy was essentially forgotten by uh, everyone other than his friends and you know people in the region. But Billy the Kid was not a big name. That book even as uh, you know, as flawed as it was as a history book, it really was fiction, uh, really brought Billy back to prominence. Here's 
what Paulita Maxwell Jaramillo says. An old story that identifies me as Billy the Kid's sweetheart has been going the rounds for many years. Perhaps it honors me, perhaps not. Depends. It depends on how you feel about it. But I was not Billy the Kid's sweetheart. Now, we'll stop right there. That's pretty emphatic. I was not Billy the Kid's sweetheart. I was not. That's it. There are things that point to the fact that she was Billy the Kid's sweetheart, but Paulita, Paulita Maxwell in 1926 or thereabouts said she wasn't. Well, I mean, she was alive and Billy was dead. So, you know, there probably weren't that many people left around to dispute that. This is a good 45 years after Billy was killed. She continues, I liked him very, very much. Very, very much. There's two varies there. That's kind of telling. Oh, yes, but I did not love him. He was a nice boy, at least to me, courteous, gallant, and always respectful. I used to meet him at dances. He was, of course, often at our home, but he and I had no thought of marriage. Well, look, I'm not a detective, but I've spent some time around detectives, and this is a really, really interesting answer. Because she says, I wasn't Billy the Kid's sweetheart. Perhaps it honors me, perhaps not, but I was not his sweetheart. And then unprompted in the interview continues that he was nice. I met him at dances, but he and I had no thought of marriage. Whoa, whoa. Ease up there, girl. Who discussed marriage? Like, why would you go so far into your answer to go from sweetheart to getting married? So that gives me a, a, a you know rather large uh question mark in my mind about what was in her mind while answering the question. Continues. There was a story that Billy and I had laid our plans to elope to old Mexico and had fixed the date for the night just after that on which he was killed. There was another tale that we proposed to elope riding double on one horse. Neither story was true, and the one about eloping on one horse was a joke. Pete Maxwell and my brother had more horses than he knew what to do with. If Billy and I had wanted to set off for the Rio Grande by the light of the moon, you may depend upon it. We would at least have had separate mounts. <laughs> I did not need to put my arms around any man's waist to keep from falling off a horse. Not I. I was, if you please, brought up in the saddle and plumed myself on my horsemanship. Okay. All right. So... Another two stories that are wrong, according to her. And she seems to take umbrage with the fact that she was going to ride, uh, you know, uh, behind Billy on the saddle. Like she was a very independent woman. And I assume in 1926, she was. She's just going to die a few years later. But she's, you know, she's advanced into older age, probably a lot more confident and worldly than she was when she was 16. But, or maybe 17, just depending on uh, when her birthday was. But uh, yeah, so, okay, we got, we got it. You weren't his sweetheart, even though we didn't ask, you weren't going to marry him. And here are all these stories about marrying him that you know an awful lot about, and you're going to refute those too. Okay. Um, now, this is the, I, I've, I've not heard this in a long time and many people pass over. This is Paulita Maxwell's answer to Walter Burns Noble question about what Billy the Kid was doing in Fort Sumner. Listen to this carefully. Billy the Kid, after his escape at Lincoln, came to Fort Sumner, it is true, to see a woman he was in love with, but it was not I. Again, why add that? Right? Like if I say, oh, my friend came to my house uh, because uh, they were going to meet somebody here they were in love with, but it wasn't me, That's <laughs> that seems like an, a kind of an assumption of guilt. But anyway, that was, but it was not I. Pat Garrett ought to have known who she was because he was connected with her and not very distantly by marriage. So this is Paulita saying it was Celso Gutierrez. That's essentially what she's saying here. It was Celsa. She didn't name her. I don't know why. I mean, Celsa Gutierrez was uh, passed by that point. She couldn't refute the story. And, you know, it's a nice misdirection. But in, in any event, she's saying it wasn't her, but Pat Garrett should have known who it was. But, but here, tune in your eardrums to this. 
The night the kid was killed, Garrett asked Pete Maxwell why the kid was in Fort Sumner. Pete shook his head and said he didn't know. All right. The night we know from Garrett's testimony and from Poe's testimony that they don't see Maxwell, if they are to be believed, until Garrett goes into the bedroom near midnight when uh, Maxwell is already asleep. Poe and McKinney never even go inside. They never meet. They see Maxwell after they come running out when there's some gunshots. Got that? That's not the that's not the shocker, but that's the setup. So it's not like they sat around, had dinner and said, hey, Pete, where's that Billy the Kid? Or they were having drinks or they were playing cards. It was Garrett asked my brother why the kid was in Sumner. Pete shook his head and said he didn't know, but he merely wanted to save Garrett the embarrassment. Now, Celso Gutierrez was married to Saval Gutierrez. Uh, Maybe that's the embarrassment. I don't know. Um, I don't know why Garrett would be embarrassed about that. He's not responsible for anybody else's actions. But here's the blowaway line. He knew, and this is Paulita saying, he knew and I knew. I was standing beside Pete's chair at the time, and I would have answered Garrett's question if Pete, by a look, had not warned me to keep my mouth shut. Paulita Maxwell puts herself in the room next to the chair where, I don't know, I guess Garrett's sitting. And when Garrett asks, you know, why is the kid here or is the kid here? Maxwell says he doesn't know and then shoots a look at Paulita. And that that look is, don't say anything. You'll embarrass Garrett. Paulita Maxwell was in Pete's bedroom at about midnight. Standing there next to the chair where Pat Garrett is sitting. What the hell is she doing there? Why is this not part of anybody's, anybody else's testimony? And if it's not true, why does she insert herself into the room? It makes her look terrible. It makes her look like she, she didn't do anything to save the kid's life. I mean, this is, if you're, if you're a historian of this stuff, this is kind of earth shaking. This is a first person account from somebody who says they were there in the room and everybody else said it was just two people in the room until the kid walks in. Does Garrett get together with Poe and McKinney and Pete Maxwell and say, Hey, we got to protect your sister because she was in there. Why are people going to kill her because she was in the room when Billy, the kid was shot? It doesn't make any sense. She carries on, but if I had loved the kid and he had loved me, I will say that I would not have hesitated to marry him and follow him through danger, poverty, or hardship to the ends of the earth in spite of anything he had done or what the world might have pleased to think of me. That is the way Spanish girls are when they are in love. Well, I'm sorry. Paulita Maxwell, but you just told us you were in love with the kid and that you did have a relationship with him. There is absolutely no way you go to that depth. If I I would have not, I would not have hesitated to marry him, follow him through danger, poverty, hardship. Is that an off the cuff remark? You say, if, you know, if the kid loved me and I loved him, yeah, of course I would have married him. But to go on and on like that, I don't think so. I really don't, I don't think you can discount yourself as being the girlfriend of Billy the Kid, or at least one of them, and probably the one he was there to see that very night. So Paulita's own words, at least to me, this is my opinion, implicate her as being the romantic interest of William H. Bonney. Paulita's own words paint a picture of a life that she expected to have with William Bonney. And it was not sitting at the old fort and drinking tea in the afternoon and, you know, watching the cowboys bring the horses in. It was running. It was going to old Mexico. It was, you know, whatever. Because if she had loved him and he loved her, she would go to the ends of the earth for him. Crazy. 
Yet she starts off by saying, I was not Billy the Kid's girl, his sweetheart. And then she says a bunch of things that prove that she most likely was. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about what she may have had of Billy's on the night he died. We'll be right back after this. All right, we're back. 14 July, 1881, just before midnight, Billy the Kid backs into Pete Maxwell's room after confronting Poe and McKinney on the porch. He says something along the lines of, who are those guys on the porch? And Garrett, sitting on his gun, has to roll off as Maxwell says, that's him. Except when he rolls to his left to get to his gun, he bumps his shoulder into Paulita Maxwell, who's standing there the whole time and would have told Garrett that Billy was there to see Celso Gutierrez. At least all of this, according to the testimony of one Paulita Maxwell. Crazy. You don't hear that story. What happened to her? Okay, so the kid is killed. Whoever's there. However it happened, shot in the heart with one shot from Garrett's revolver. Garrett binds Paulita, holds her hostage to draw the kid in. Garrett hides under a bed in the hallway, shoots Billy in the face so he can't be identified. I mean, whatever, who knows? We weren't there, so nobody knows. You don't know, I don't know, nobody knows. But in any event, uh, that all happens. Paulita is rumored at 16 years old to be pregnant. She's rumored to be pregnant. Yes, that's right. You heard me right. And the child is rumored to be that of Billy the Kid. Now, if you look at the children, tell us for, tell us for, gosh, I wish I knew how to say that, uh, Adelina and Luz, none of them passed away at 16 years old, somewhere around uh, 1898 or so, right? In 1897. But this daughter that Paulita was rumored to be pregnant with does pass away at about 16 years old. Interesting, huh? Well, could Paulita Baca, uh, Paulita Baca, I'm sorry, <laughs> Paulita Maxwell be pregnant with Billy the Kid's baby? Well, the answer obviously is yes. I mean, she certainly was old enough, I think. Probably had gone through puberty and could actually become pregnant and carry a baby. I would assume Billy at 18, 19, 20, 21, however old he is, we still don't know exactly, could father a child. Uh, let's look at the timeline, though. Does the timeline make sense? Billy uh, has been on the run uh, since December. He's captured in December. Uh, just before on the 23rd, then he's taken back through Fort Sumner. He's chained to Dave Rudabaugh and uh, Diluvina asks Pat Garrett or one of the deputies, can you unchain Billy so he and Paulita can properly say goodbye? And the deputies wisely say no. And so Billy, handcuffed to Rudabaugh, has this deep and passionate kiss with Paulita Maxwell right there in the Maxwell house. That doesn't sound like somebody that you weren't interested in. I mean, it, 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 people see it. It's written of and reported later on. It doesn't sound like the kind of thing that, uh, you know, somebody would uh, just make up for the heck of it, right? And so uh, you got to imagine there's something going on there. But in any event, that's all they get is the kiss. They don't get... Uh, <laughs> they don't get unchained. They don't get to go to the bedroom and wait, 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 you know, like that doesn't happen. And then Billy goes to Las Vegas and then Santa Fe and he's held there and then he's tried and then he's sent to Lincoln. So, you know, not, not getting to connect in the biblical sense with Paulita during any of this. But Billy escapes jail in Lincoln on April the 28th. 1881. Now, Lincoln to Fort Sumner, if you draw a straight line, uh, actually, let me let me get the map here, because I, I always just kind of eyeball it, but Lincoln, New Mexico, 
Okay, and then we'll get directions to not mine, Fort Sumner. Yeah, okay. So Lincoln is, uh, gosh, even if you draw a straight, well, if you could draw a straight line, it's probably 100 miles or so. Um, it's 139 miles driving. And I'm going to guess that the roads we have today roughly follow the trails, but Billy can't follow those trails. I mean, there's no way that Billy can, you know, take the most used trails because he's just killed two deputies. And I'm assuming he assumes that Garrett is going to get a posse and come out after him. Um, I think it was uh, uh, Jim uh, Meadows that first night Billy, you know, stops and stays with when he gets out of Lincoln. But you've got to imagine, you know, this trip is going to take him at least four to five days and he loses his horse about 20 miles from Fort Sumner. And so he's got to walk the rest in 20 miles pretty good march um, over, you know, rough terrain. You can walk a marathon in about six hours if you walk fast. That's 26 miles. Walking 20 miles in boots um, over, you know, sand and uh, gopher holes and uh, cactus and scrub brush, that kind of stuff. I'm going to say it's a whole day. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it five days. I'm going to say it took Billy five days to get there. I could be off by a day or so, but that puts him in uh, Fort Sumner, somewhere around early May, almost about the time we are now, maybe, you know, five, four or five days ago. And he is shot and killed, for, if, if he was shot and killed, of course. <laughs> uh, he's shot and killed uh, 14 July. So we've got essentially nine weeks between when Billy arrives and when he's killed or, we, or they say he's killed. And then he leaves and is never seen again in Fort Sumner. Um, that's plenty of time for he and Paulita to, to get together. Uh, nine weeks, I don't think you're going to be showing if you're pregnant. So uh, I think it would just be, a, you know, Paulita would have known. And she might or might not have told anybody else. And she probably wouldn't tell Pete. Um, until, you know, afterwards, maybe she had no choice at some point because she was starting to show that she was pregnant. And so, but yeah, there was certainly was plenty of time there, but the baby could be no more than nine weeks old and probably, you know, something less than that. Like, I don't think on the first day Billy rides in, he goes, Hey, Paulita, let's go out in the peach orchard. Hey, he probably wants to take a bath, change clothes, shave a little bit, get something to eat, you know, get his energy up. I mean, he wants to, he wants to perform. So somewhere thereabouts, you know, you've got a baby that's well within the first trimester. And then the story is, that uh, the Maxwells, uh, after Billy's killed, this is just the story, the legend, that the uh, Maxwells arranged for Paulita to, to marry Jose Jaramillo, who's a sheep herder in the area, to spare their family the embarrassment. Um, Jose Jaramillo turns out to not be a nice guy, an alcoholic. Um, as I remember, as I remember, I didn't do much research on him. He was uh, abusive toward Paulita, and she eventually divorces him. Um, you know, at some point later, but you know, I mean, an arranged marriage, you just find somebody and you, you hook up with them, right? Not hook up, but I mean, you, you marry them just so you, you can legitimize the birth, but that girl, if it was a girl is not marked anywhere. There's no family record. It has been expunged as they say in uh, legal terms. And nobody knows who she is, what her name was, where she went, where she died, what happened. So, you know, what do you think? If you take a look at uh, Telesphore, Telesphore, he's born in 1883, although I've seen his birthday as late as the 1890s. But he's born in 83. There's no way, if that's true that he could be the offspring of Billy the Kid. I mean, women aren't pregnant for 18 months or, or longer. I mean, if, you, if you're pregnant for 18 months, the kid's going to come out with a beard and a job. So that's not going to work. So it can't be him if those years, that birth year is correct. And it could not be Adelino or Luz. They're, they're born 1884 and 1892. Was there a fourth child? Was it kept under wraps? Was that girl Billy the Kid's daughter? Well, 
if you go and talk to the uh, old timers in Fort Sumner, I don't mean now, but back then, I haven't been able to find any contemporary accounts of people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we knew that uh, Paulita had Billy's daughter and, you know, a good old Jose just had to put up with it. I just never, never heard that anywhere else. But the legend certainly is that she was pregnant. Pete was upset and Pete wanted to spare the family the embarrassment of having a, you know, an out of wedlock child to a, you know, murderer. I mean, Billy was a murderer, however you, whether you want to justify it or not. Um, you know, that doesn't look good on the, uh, you know, on the family tree. So uh, we don't know. But here's the thing. Back in those days, the records were kept either by the church often or by the family. Family Bible. Uh, Brushy Bill has, his family has somewhere his family Bible that shows his birth date. What the birth date is, well, you're, you know, you're not going to find out because nobody's showing you the Bible, but that's the way, uh, you know, births were, were uh, documented back then. And so I would assume that something similar happened here, but would you even document the birth? If Telesphor was Billy's kid, do you just fudge the date and go, hey, we'll, we'll have him be born a year later. So this way, looks like it couldn't be Billy's because clearly, you know, there's a there's a, a marker that says he was killed in July 1881. Or do you, uh, if there's a daughter, do you just hide her identity, quickly get Paulita married uh, to Jose Jaramillo? And uh, then does the daughter never know? And nobody ever questions it because that again, the, the pregnancy at the time, if it, if there was a pregnancy at the time is very, very new. You know, it, it's six weeks, seven weeks, maybe. And so if Paulita's married within a few weeks afterward, a month afterward, yeah, I mean, people might go, oh, wait a minute. You know, I think she's been married seven months and she just had a baby. And that might be a bit of a scandal, but yeah, maybe, you know, maybe she and Jose had been dating and, you know, things happened. I don't know. Um, but, you know, you, 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 you clearly had at least a window of opportunity in the short order after July 14th to be able to cover this up if you wanted to. So did Billy the Kid have a daughter? We're going to talk about Abrana Garcia in another uh, episode. But interestingly enough, uh, there's a, uh, uh, let me get to the, the note. There's a uh, Elbert Garcia who wrote a book. It says he was Billy the Kid's great grandson. And uh, says that uh, Abrana Garcia in Fort Sumner gave, secretly gave birth to Billy's son, Jose Patrocinio Garcia, who was Elbert's great grandfather. Except that the story at the time was that Abrana gave birth to two daughters who died young. And that was just a ruse created by the Garcia family to hide the fact that Jose Patrocinio Garcia was born. Now that makes zero sense to me. I'm going to make up two kids that didn't actually get born to hide the fact that I actually did have a kid. Like, is that the ultimate unmisdirection? I stole a car, so I'm going to go steal a car so people don't think that I stole a car. I mean, it's, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But if you go back to the, the Maxwell family, you can take a look at that and go, okay, well, this makes a little more sense if you're trying to cover something up. You're, you're giving another plausible reason why Paulita could be pregnant and why she could be having a baby at a pretty young age. I mean, 17 years old, I would guess at that time, if it actually happened. Now, the Maxwell family says, absolutely not. I can't remember the lady's name. She hates me. But a uh, member of the Maxwell family, some, some relative, distant relative of Paulita, and says, oh, no, absolutely not. They, you know, they were not uh, lovers. They were not an item. They weren't anything. And uh, anybody who says they are is wrong. Well, you don't know that either. 
Uh, she hates me because in my first film, in their own words, Billy the Kid in the Lincoln County War, we had a wonderful actress named Carla Sports Garcia. Now, I don't know why she wanted sports in there. Carla, if you're listening, I still don't get it. Nickname, I get it, but I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Carla portrayed uh, an older version of Paulita Maxwell in the film. This film was totally unscripted. I gave everybody research to do on their character, and then we got them in front of the camera and and basically interviewed them. And I, I, I thought Carla did it, just an incredible job of bringing, uh, uh, you know, bringing Paulita to life, and did a great job of research. And at the end, she did say. You know, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but she did say that, uh, you know, I, uh, yes, I was pregnant with Billy's child and she died so young and, you know, it was, it was, you know, just heartbreaking and, and, you know, we didn't want anybody to know. And so uh, Paulita's relative saw that and flipped out. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if you were there on set while we were filming this thing and you saw uh, Carla Garcia as Paulita Maxwell talking about this and crying like real tears. And when I finally yelled cut, there were a bunch of the rest of us were crying too. I mean, it was a really dramatic and impactful for performance. So if I'm the family of Paulita Maxwell, I'm actually thankful going, wow, somebody really gave her life because all she's talked about now, I mean, the only reason Paulita Maxwell's talked about is because she was Billy the Kid's girl or she wasn't, whatever happened, but, but that's it. So there you go. So you, if you want to go see that movie, you can go find that on Amazon Prime <laughs> or on Zumo, X-U-M-O. If you use that, you can download the app and I think you just watch it for free. Um, in their own words, Billy the Kid in the Lincoln County War and look out for Carla Sports Garcia. And Carla also uh, had, a, uh, had a brief appearance in my latest film, The Final Trial of Billy the Kid as attorney Alberta Bretz. So you can check her out on both of those. All right. So was Paulita Billy's girl? She says no. The evidence and the testimony of Paulita say most likely yes. Was Paulita pregnant? That's a stretch. We don't know. Um, but there's certainly enough rumor and innuendo that people thought she was and thought that she gave birth to Billy's daughter and thought that that daughter who has become or remained anonymous, died at a young age, about 16 years old. What happened to Paulita Maxwell after the death of Billy in the Lincoln County War? We'll get to that right after this. All right, welcome back to All Things Billy, our Paulita Maxwell episode. Paulita had a lot to say after the fact about her uh, not only relationship with Billy the Kid, but relationships of other people with him. And uh, if you can find her interview, um, it's, uh, it's fascinating some of the details she gives. You don't know which ones to believe, which ones not to believe. Um, I, you know, other than maybe her being Billy's sweetheart and maybe having his baby, I don't know why she would need to um, you lie about all the other ones, like at that point, but people lie about stuff all the time, or they, uh, they enhance things, uh, they make things seem bigger, better than they were. So the answer is, you know, we don't know. Um, interesting. Anyway, so uh, Paulita, uh, after the fact, lives never, never really leaves uh, Fort Sumner. Um, incidentally, just to take a step back, um, if you look at uh, True West magazine, there's a guy named uh, Marshall Trimble, official historian, board pre Arizona's official historian, board president of the Arizona Historical Society, and vice president of the Wild West History Association. Marshall Trimble a uh, answers a question. Uh, let's see if I can. This is back from 2016. Somebody says, did Paulita Maxwell bear Billy's child. Uh, Marshall Trimble says Paulita Maxwell was Billy the Kid's favorite squeeze. Okay. Uh, and she was pregnant at the time he was killed. So she was probably carrying his baby. Well, that's pretty matter of fact. I don't know where those, you know, probably and absolutes come from. I try to stay away from those because nobody knows. Um, 
Paulita Maxwell, who, if the gossip of Garrett's wife Apollinaria had doubtless heard from her sister Celso was true, was pregnant with Billy's child. That's Frederick Nolan saying that. So in other words, Celsa tells Garrett's wife, because they're sisters, uh, that Paulita Maxwell's pregnant with Billy's child. Garrett, who's on the hunt for the kid, figures that Maxwell had told the outlaw about her pregnancy and that he would go to Fort Sumner where Garrett was shot. So in other words, Garrett figures the reason he goes to Fort Sumner is not because he thinks Billy would go there because, I don't know, he likes the booze or he wants to steal horses, but because there's a woman there that's pregnant that's going to have his baby. Well, that doesn't make, that doesn't jibe uh, with, uh, you know, the accepted timelines. There was no conjugal visit in the Lincoln County Courthouse. And so Billy wouldn't go to Fort Sumner because Paulita was pregnant Billy would go to Paul to uh, Fort Sumner to make Paulita pregnant, right? There was no other chance. I mean, if if he had gotten her pregnant before uh, uh, before he uh, was arrested, then it would have had to be in December, like seven, almost eight months earlier. She would be ready to give birth, and clearly she wasn't. So uh, that doesn't uh, make any sense. Who that? I think that's Marshall Trimble's. Um, uh, answer there. But the only thing that makes sense is if he got her pregnant and then stayed in the area and she said, hey, guess what? I'm pregnant. But that would take her usually a month to figure out, right? So there's a really small slice of time where he could have done that. Um, Drew Gomber says, our buddy, uh, Paulita had a daughter, but the date of her birth has always been in doubt. And she died about 16. Whether or not Paulita had Billy's kid, I don't know, but I do believe she was pregnant at the time of the kid's death. Her brother, Pete Maxwell, was a mighty unhappy fellow. Well, I, that I could certainly understand. So there are a number of people that certainly believe that Paulita, uh, you know, would uh, uh, would have uh, been pregnant with Billy's baby, Billy's daughter. Okay. Uh, Paulita uh, stays in Fort Sumner. She's interviewed by Walter Burns Noble in Again, I'm going with 26. I think that's the year the book came out, so it may have been 25. And rumor is, and there's no documentation of this, that Paulita says she's going to sue Noble to stop the publication of the book because he is going to name her as Billy's sweetheart in it. Um, so the, uh, the, the, the idea uh, is that I don't like what you're going to write, so I'm going to stop you from writing it. You can look at that two ways. You can say, um, look, uh, it's not true. I don't really care what you write because I know it's not true. Or you can say, it's not true. I'm not going to be defamed like that, and I'm going to stop you from writing it. Well, lots of people write or say things that are not true about lots of people, and then they don't sue. I wonder if Paulita knew how big this book would be. I can't imagine she or anybody else would. Because again, Billy the Kid is kind of a bit player historically at this point until the book comes out. And it just happens to become a, 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 a real sensation and a big hit, a bestseller. So why, why, the, why the lawyering up? Now, I don't know that she actually got a lawyer. She may have just threatened or written a letter to the publishing company said, hey, if you name me, I'm suing. You, uh, you can be sued for defaming a live person. You can absolutely be doing so. If I say something about you, which is not true, or you get offended by, you can sue me. <laughs> I know now there's going to be like 50 lawsuits in the mail, right? Um, you can sue for, and there can be damages, but that not always. There are exceptions. Um, things that are used uh, uh, in uh, in a satirous way, <laughs> satire, like you see uh, the cartoon South Park, and they impersonate people all the time really badly and obviously in ridiculous situations. So that's protected, right? It, we, uh, if you watch Saturday Night Live, they portray people all the time in, in unflattering ways, but in what is supposed to be comedy, that's protected. But, you know, a serious uh, discussion or dialogue about somebody with things that are clearly not true, um, you know, and are stated emphatically, yeah, I mean, you could, but you cannot defame a dead person. That's the key. You cannot, uh, you, you can't uh, impact somebody's 
image when they've passed away, or you can, and you can't be sued for it, I guess. There's no defamation against somebody who's passed away. Now, the, that person's uh, estate can certainly try to manage that. And there, there have been people that have, uh, you know, uh, attempted to, you know, protect the identity or protect the uh, persona of someone who's passed on. You can control their intellectual property. So as a, for instance, I'm a big Buddy Holly fan. I've got a Buddy Holly film I'd love to make. I think it's a really intriguing idea, but I could do it. There's nobody that could stop me, but Buddy's wife, Maria Elena Holly, who lives in Dallas. Hi, Maria, if you're listening, love to meet you. Um, she controls the estate, all the copyrights to his music and his likenesses and those kind of things. So if you're going to make a Buddy Holly movie and you want to use any Buddy Holly songs, you have to get the permission of the estate. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to, you know, kind of have some alternate world where Buddy Holly sings, you know, different songs and you're not going to use any real photographs, then nobody can stop you from doing that. But Paulita Maxwell, legend says, history says, threatens Noble's publisher and says, withdraw the book. Uh, take me out of it or I'll sue. And if she uh, either believed or was going to force the fact that she was not a uh, uh, not a uh, main squeeze of Billy, then she would have had every right to do that and possibly could have won. So Noble goes back, rewrites the uh, love interest as Celso Gutierrez. And that's who Paulita says was the love interest. So she got her way or she told the truth. She either told, she either lied and got her way or told the truth and wasn't defamed. We don't know. But the interview is really far reaching. She talks about Garrett and the fact that it was a complete surprise when Garrett was even named as a candidate for sheriff. He had no uh, law enforcement experience. The only thing that the Santa Fe ring wanted was somebody that knew Billy hideouts, haunts, etc. Um, and basically Garrett was, was given the job of sheriff to rid the county or rid the territory of Billy Bonnie. Paulita dies at, uh, at Fort Sumner, new Fort Sumner, uh, at age 65, roughly, since we don't know her exact birthday cause of her death was nephritis inflammation of the kidney sounds like it's probably pretty painful and buried in Fort Sumner's, the old post cemetery uh, near Billy. Um, te Telesfor, Telesfor married a woman called Reina Romero and they had one son, Luciano Jaramillo, who remained unmarried and childless until his death in 2004. Um, the, I think it was interesting that this was uh, added as a footnote <laughs> that there might be some blood relation between Telesfor and Billy the Kid because it doesn't talk about the other daughters. Okay. So uh, Paulita never leaves the fort, lives a, you know, a peaceful life, um, probably up until Walter Burns Noble came knocking around. Um, you know, I, I think Billy the Kid was, you know, maybe a an interesting discussion, historical, one of those things where you wax poetic on the old days. But uh, yeah, just uh, I don't think it was a big deal to her. Paulita recounts going out and uh, being challenged by her brother Pete, who's afraid of ghosts. Uh, but he challenges her to go out to the old post cemetery and take Billy's cross, which she does, brings it back to the house. He's amazed that she's not afraid of ghosts. Um, she talks about uh, Billy's disdain for Barney Mason and how Mason would run from Fort Sumner essentially any time he heard Billy was anywhere near. And there was a pretty good uh, little you know, communication system up there on the plains. So it's not like Billy would just sneak in. Uh, people would know that. She also talks about the uh, infamous picture of Billy the Kid. She says uh, that the only uh, photograph of Billy the Kid, the only photograph Billy the Kid ever had taken was in possession of the Maxwell family for many years. Now, if you talk to Randy Gaharo, he'll say, oh, that's not the only <laughs> picture that Billy had taken. He, he had the croquet picture taken or somebody took it of him. But the, the only picture that Billy stood for on his own, as far as we can tell anyway, 
is the Fort Sumner picture. She says it was taken by a traveling photographer who came through Fort Sumner in 1880. Billy posed for it standing in the street near old Beaver Smith Saloon. I never liked the picture. I don't think it does Billy justice. It makes him look rough and uncouth. The expression on his face was really boyish and pleasant. He may have worn such clothes as appear in the picture out on the range, but in Fort Sumner, he was careful of his personal appearance and dressed neatly and in good taste. Now, uh, people have pointed out that there's no, <laughs> nobody alive ever took the picture and signed an affidavit and said, this is a picture of William H. Bonney, Billy the Kid. So there are people that believe that the picture itself is not of Billy. So anything you compare to it, uh, you can't prove that any other pictures are not Billy since that one is not documented. Well, you know, at some point, I guess that's true. I mean, if, <laughs> if I traveled back in time and I was there and I took a selfie of me and Billy as he was getting his picture taken with the photographer, and then I brought that back and said, hey, look, I was there. It was the picture. That would be proof. But aside from that, you have to just follow the chain of provenance. Um, and this particular picture that Paulita had uh, was uh, uh, never never made it to modern day. Uh, uh, De Luvina had it. Um, she worshipped the picture. Um, it, da, 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 she, he got a heavy scarf, blah, 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 carried a pocket. Um, he gave her when she went to see him in uh, Arroyo Taiban, not Taiban, Taiban. That's uh, she had a misspeak there. Um, gave Delavina the picture. My mother kept the picture in a cedar chest for years, and finally, my sister Odila gave it to John Legg, a Fort Sumner saloon keeper and friend of the family. Legg was shot and killed, and Charlie Four, an executor of his estate, his estate came into possession of the picture when Four's house was burned down. The original was destroyed, but fortunately, many copies of it had been made. Well, there were there were probably four uh, on that that tin type, so you didn't even need a copy. There's still an original that the Coke one of the Coke brothers paid two point three million dollars for, and it's somewhere in Florida right now. Um, but uh, interesting that at that time, I wonder if. Any of us could go sit with Paulita Maxwell in 1926. Would we have other questions? I sure would. I'd have tons more questions for her. But it was a long and far-ranging interview, and there's a lot of uh, great stuff there. Um, but uh, it didn't it didn't scratch the surface of all the things we want to know about the lovely Bell of. I was going to say the Bell of Lincoln, Bell of Fort Sumner, <laughs> Paulita Maxwell, the Bell of Lincoln is the absolutely beautiful Rosita Luna, but that's another story for another day. And she was most certainly not a girlfriend of Billy the Kid. So that's one down, many to go, if you are to be believed. Celsa Gutierrez, Abrana Garcia, girls in every port, the Cedillos girl down in San Patricio. Yeah, I mean, there was, it, I, I think it's pretty clear that Billy was, if Billy was alone, it's because he needed a night off. I don't think he had uh, very much of a challenge finding women that would succumb to his charms. Even today, I, I think if he came back now, I think there'd be plenty of women that would line up to be with the infamous outlaw, uh, Billy the Kid. And um, yeah, so good, good on you, kid. Uh, congratulations, man. So we are uh, just about done and out of time. I hope you have enjoyed uh, our little dive. I'm not going to say it that way. Our expl No, I'm not going to say it that way either, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. How's that? Yeah, that's better than anything else. And uh, we'll be back with more All Things Billy soon. Stay tuned for an announcement as soon as we get an announcement on the uh, release of the final trial of Billy the Kid. And of course, go download the absolutely free Back to Billy audiobook. You don't have to read. You just listen to my dulcet tones for hour after hour after hour. Just check the show notes for that. Appreciate y'all. Talk to you next time. <laughs>